Sabah everybody and welcome back to the channel. The OnePlus Nord is here. It's been here for about a week now. We've heard about it. We've seen a lot of videos. You probably have a lot of videos in your inbox today talking about the review or different experiences with the OnePlus Nord. I want to actually summarize for you guys my experience of using the Nord for the last week with the top 10 things that I like and then of course the top 5 things that I don't like or are concerning me. This is TK and this is the brand new OnePlus Nord and of course thank you very much for everybody that subscribed to the channel. Let's not waste any time. Let's check out all the cool things and all the issues or concerns with the brand new OnePlus Nord. Like and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell icon so that you're always notified to whenever we have new videos on the channel. So before we start with everything that we're going to talk about in this video, I do want to give you guys a little bit of a background. I've had this device for about a week now, so the experience that I'm sharing with you guys is after using it for a week. But I've been using OnePlus devices for many, many years, as you guys know from the channel. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive in into first the top 10 things that I liked about it. And we're going ahead and start with the fact that this display is a 6.44 inch flat display. This is a flat display. This is something that we lost with the OnePlus 8 when OnePlus released both the 8 and the 8 Pro. And what I mean by this essentially is you're looking at a device that actually gained something that we've had for many time, for many years. So OnePlus historically has always released a version of the device. So there's the 7 and the 7 Pro, the 8 or the 7T and the 7T Pro. And of course, the 8 and the 8 Pro went a little bit different. They both share the same symmetry. They both have the curved display. So here's the, set, the 8 and here is the 8 Pro. Nothing's wrong with the design. I love the design and I think this is something that you guys can should consider if you're thinking about getting the 8 or the 8 Pro. But if you like something that's a little bit more uh, similar to the way we've had the 7T and that is the flat display, which a lot of people love, this is definitely a really cool thing. And again, 90 hertz display, of course, refresh rate similar to the 7T and it's a 6.44 OLED panel. So we did not lose on any of the benefits that OnePlus has always given us with their devices. So 90 Hertz means we're gonna have a very good, very really good response on this display. And of course, we're gonna be able to get some really good uh, deep blacks and color representation is gonna be really good. Also, it's a massive display with a punch hole camera on the bottom left, which I feel like is the right spot to put it in because whenever we're consuming content on this device, it's actually gonna press or pre be present on the bottom left side, which is the area that we generally do not look at. We're looking at everything here, top left, top right, everything. And for the most part, that area is not going to be an issue. Now you notice we have a dual camera setup on the front, a 32 and an eight megapixel sensor. Now, one thing I want to mention to you guys, there's a few features here that I really love and we'll talk about them in a second. But I also want to talk to you guys about uh, if you stay with me to the end of the video, but the things that they actually had to cut, meaning the corners that the OnePlus team had to do or cut to be able to fit this into the price point that they're starting at, which is roughly 399 euros, $420 or so on the base model in the European market. And of course, in India, they started actually around $335, which is 24, uh, 25,000 rupees. And that's going to be for a 664 gig model of this device. The internals other than, uh, than just the storage and the RAM are for the most part, the exact same. Four cameras on the back, two cameras on the front, Gorilla Glass 5 on the front and on the back. The battery that we have here is also a large battery. It's at 4,115. So I say basically a 4,100 milliamp battery that is supported with Warp Charge 30T. So they kept the speed charging that we've normally, basically that we see with the OnePlus 8 and the 8 Pro when it comes to wire charging. And at the, during the launch event, they said that they should be able to get us up to 70% in about 30 minutes. In my experience, when I did do the, a couple of run tests on this, right now it runs about 67% in about 30 minutes, which is not bad considering that it's actually over 50% on a battery in about 30 minutes using the wire charger. And this is from dead. This is not from like 1%. So keep in mind, fast charging on a 4,000 milliamp battery with the 765G and a 1080p panel will give us roughly between six to seven hours of screen on time from where basically gaming, uh, watching content, or even just using our device. And of course, I've had the 90 Hertz refresh rate on all the time. I did not even touch the 60 frames per second. It comes out of the box with 90 Hertz, I kept it at 90 Hertz. So the third thing that I do wanna to mention to you guys is of course the price point that OnePlus decided to go with this. They started this device in specific markets. So the Indian market starts at around $1,300 $135. That is ridiculously cheap for a 765G mid-range device because when you think about it, the 765G is the best 7 series device that we have on the market. It also features 5G, which means we have 5G on here with the X52 modem. Now, it's not going to be basically millimeter wave, it's not going to be ultra wideband, but it still supports sub 605 5G, which for me in the US works perfectly great. This is actually supportive of the 5G that we have here from T-Mobile. So I was able to do a quick speed test right before the video started. You can see here at 821, 
It's 42 down, uh, almost you know seven and a half up, which is actually comparable to what I normally get here in my area uh, for 5G. Now I've seen it where it does go a lot faster in different areas, but again, sub 600 5G on T-Mobile in the US, I'm able to get wireless call Wi-Fi calling. So this is also really cool. Voice over LTE, which you can actually see right there. All of those things are supported. So if you're thinking about bringing it in into the US, it's gonna work great. If you're gonna use it in India, you're gonna use it in Europe, it's also gonna work great because this is actually supporting international uh, specs. So overall, the model that I have here is a 12256. There is going to be an 8128 as well as a base model of 664 in India. So a great price point, a lot of good features coming in, specifically for what you're getting. We are getting really the OnePlus experience at a very budget price. We kind of covered number four for me, which essentially is the 765G with the X52 modem. And that was basically the best of the seven series that we get. OnePlus is saying that it's roughly 30% faster or better performance overall than the 730G that we had last time. And I tend to agree with the fact that we have the X52 modem, it also supports much faster connections, which really helps us a lot, especially if you wanna to try to use the benefit of what OnePlus gives you here under the actual Wi-Fi setting. So if you go into Wi-Fi network, there's the dual channel network acceleration. It gives us the ability of using Wi-Fi and LTE or 5G to be able to speed up our download speed. So all of the stuff that you normally would expect from OnePlus, the, the dark theme, um, the customizations, all of those things from Oxygen OS are here on top of the fact that you're getting a very smooth, a very fast experience. And honestly, if you give this to somebody without telling them this is not a flagship experience, you're pretty much gonna be hard pressed to find a way for them to figure out that it's not. Unless they start gaming, I really feel like the overall day-to-day -day usage is actually top notch. Now, one of the things that I really like about this here is it also did give the OnePlus Nord a few unique features. And what I mean by this is I'm talking about the fact that the camera application features a very interesting mode. And at the mode that essentially when we switch to the front facing camera, we actually have two sensors. We have a 32 and an eight. The 32 obviously is the main sensor. That's gonna be the best sensor. The eight megapixel is gonna be a little bit lower, but it does give us the ability of using that wide angle lens. Now that also supports HDR in video. It also supports, let's go ahead and jump into video. Uh, we also have the ability of jumping in between those two video options. So that's also something very interesting. The last thing that I really feel like that is super unique, not even the OnePlus 8 Pro has, when you go into the resolution, you'll notice that we still have the 1080p 30, 1080p 60, 4K 30, 4K 30 cinema on the back sensor. So you see it right there, rear sensor. Now that's gonna be the 48 megapixel sensor that we have that is exactly the same one that we have on the OnePlus uh, 8. So what you're getting here is really roughly a OnePlus 8 experience uh, combined with a little bit of OnePlus 7T experience since we have four cameras. Uh, we have a wide angle lens, a standard focal length, a telephoto lens, and a, basically a depth sensor. And the two cameras on the front, obviously a standard and a wide angle lens. But where it becomes really interesting is when you jump down to the front facing camera resolution or the max. Not only do you have 4K 30, you have 4K 60 frames per second on the front facing 32 megapixel sensor. And that is something extremely unique because historically it's been capped at 1080p on all OnePlus devices. This type of experience makes this very much a compelling device. If you're thinking about using it for vlogging, if you're thinking about using it for basically creating content with it, because you're getting a high megapixel sensor and you're actually using the full potential of that sensor. Very, very nice. And of course, last but not least, I do want to talk about the fact that you have the ability of using that nice new sharing function that only exists on the OnePlus Nord. This was the last picture that I used with Nightscape last night coming back from the beach. And of course, I can jump straight into either the feed and I can open it up and directly into my feed and I'm able to put it and share it directly out of my camera application. So what I mean by that is that this is an example of what the front facing 4K 60 frames per second is on the OnePlus Nord. Again, 4K 60 on the 32 megapixel sensor at its full potential. Now, if we drop it down to 1080p, we're able to actually jump in between the wide angle lens and the standard focal length. Right now, we're using obviously the 32 megapixel, which is the standard focal length. But let me go ahead and drop the video down to 1080p and we can actually use both lenses, the front facing wide angle lens or the standard focal length. Again, a lot of flexibility for a mid-ranger, but again, two cameras in the front that are being used to their full potential on the OnePlus Nord. Now, obviously, all this means whenever we switch over to the back-facing sensor, we have 4K 30 frames per second in both the standard and the wide-angle lens. And right now, I'm obviously using the wide-angle lens so that we're able to get the full potential of the back sensor. You can use it standard or wide on both the front or the back-facing sensors. Definitely a very unique experience for the Nord. So all in all, this pretty much kind of rounds it up. Six cameras, four on the back, two on the front. Now, keep in mind the depth sensor in the back is gonna be really helpful for that uh, bokeh or basically depth uh, images. And of course, what we're looking here is that same 48 megapixel sensor with OIS and EIS on the main primary shooter. 4K 30 on the back, 4K 60 on the front. But as you can see, a really good experience with the fingerprint sensor as well as front facing camera unlocks. And as you can see, it runs really, really fast. The UI overall 
product is definitely what you can expect from OnePlus, even at the OnePlus 8 level, brought down to the OnePlus Nord. One thing that is unheard for in this actual price point, roughly what you're looking at here essentially is a device that will receive two major software updates, which means it launched with Android 10, it will receive Android 11, it will also receive Android 12. So OnePlus is promising us all, all the way up to Android 12 update to the OnePlus Nord, on top of the fact that it will also give us three years of software patch updates, which means security updates on this all the way up to Android 12 will be supported up to three years on the OnePlus Nord. Again, extremely, really well thought, and that's something that OnePlus has always been able to push out. And hopefully we'll also be able to get access to the beta channel, which gives us new features or experimental features that OnePlus likes to put in in some of their devices. So the ecosystem that the OnePlus software has always benefited from is coming to the OnePlus Nord and you can definitely benefit from it. You have to consider that when you're looking at the price of a device. Overall longevity, but also how long will the company support it after you purchase or after you put your money down and you take this home? Because the moment they stop supporting you, at that point, it stops becoming a value. And right now, OnePlus is pushing value all the way up to the point where it basically literally supports what their flagship devices are supported right now with. When it comes to gaming on the OnePlus Nord, this is not going to disappoint. The OnePlus Nord is definitely going to give you the best experience that the 7 series will provide you on any device. The version that I have here has 12 gigs of RAM with 256 gigs of internal storage. Now, you're also able to get a version of it, obviously, with 8 gigs of RAM, and all of those will perform quite well. The overall benchmarks here, again, this is the best 7 series that you can expect and the best one that you can see on the market right now. So don't worry about it. It may not give you the top uh, features as far as, you know, 90 frames per second during the gameplay, but 45 frames per second on, uh, you know, here with Fortnite or even going with Smooth and Ultra on PUBG, it's definitely not going to disappoint. This is going to be a great experience overall for any user, specifically if they're thinking about gaming on the go with something that is essentially a mid-ranger, but again, still top of the line mid-ranger experience here with OnePlus. Now, before we can round up that entire list of things that I like, I do want to mention the fact that this is running Oxygen OS. Oxygen OS is by far, in my opinion, one of the best Android skins that we can get on any Android device because it runs very fast, very smooth, and it actually is very minimal in the sense of the way it actually has a footprint. We have dark mode that's present everywhere. The one thing that I do want to say though, that dark mode is not necessarily exactly the same way we've seen it on other devices, is because we actually have to go into customizations and select the theme for it to turn on. We don't have a toggle to turn it on, but when it turns on, you're able to customize it, change the icons, change the color, the accent colors, even down to the point where you're able to customize uh, how the fingerprint sensor actual uh, you know animation is set up right now. You can go in there and change it. You have the energy option and you can of course select it and you can you know, see it right away. So you push it, it comes on and it works great. Uh, you can customize almost every aspect of your device down to the launcher, as well as the ability, you know, having swipe down to open notification, which I feel like is a standard, the uh, Google feed on the left, and of course, the ability of initiating the assistant with the swipe on the bottom, pressing and holding the initiate the assistant, so a multifunctional button. And of course, that slider that we have here that's built in. It's an iconic OnePlus feature that is still present on the OnePlus Nord. All of all, I feel like what you're getting here essentially is a more refined experience of the Oxygen OS and the OnePlus experience from OnePlus for a lower price. So the last thing I definitely want to talk about is the design. They kept the very familiar OnePlus design. Now they did move the camera array to the left here to make it a little bit more unique. The dual tone, dual tone LED flash right there. We have Gorilla Glass 5 on the back with the OnePlus logo. No wireless charging, but again, keep in mind the price point that they're trying to shoot for. So we'll talk a little bit more about the corners they have to cut. Um, we have a good set of microphones, of course, dual SIM support. We have USB-C, uh, secondary microphone, bottom firing speaker here. Of course, a 6.44 massive OLED panel with 90 hertz. And of course, the ability of going all the way up to 12 gigs of RAM on a mid-ranger. Just keep in mind, and at that point, at the best, it's 499 uh, euros. So keep in mind, that's the best version of the OnePlus Nord. It starts at 399 euros, or if you're in the Indian market, all the way down to about $335 or 25,000 rupees. So again, they're trying to give you that entire gamut of mid-range uh, specs but you're also getting three years worth of software patch update as well as two version, two major software version updates to the OnePlus Nord and of course the ecosystem that you get with OnePlus. So all in all, all of these things I feel like are great. These are things that you should definitely consider. And of course, we'll talk a little bit more about some of the things that are concerning me about the OnePlus Nord. And those are specifically when it comes down to the things that they needed to do to make it happen at this price point. So the first and foremost we'll start off by saying is that this device does not support stereo speakers. So unfortunately, one thing that we definitely appreciate, specifically even on the down to the OnePlus 7T from last year, is the stereo speakers on OnePlus devices. They sound great, they're present, they're there. The audio on this is not bad, it's not bad at all. It's just, and it actually can get pretty loud. So let's go ahead and play 
my typical song. This is Jumbo by Alex Scrindo. So they definitely did not skip on the speaker. It definitely gets very, very loud. And of course, for wired connection, you're able to also listen and configure it with the DRAC uh, audio tuner. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. We have some um, audio modes that are configured specifically for the OnePlus earphones. And of course, they did also release the OnePlus Buds and that will be covered in a slightly different video as I'm waiting for the update for the OnePlus Nord to support the uh, programmable functions here. But the overall experience, again, they didn't just basically try to give you, uh, you know, a simple experience. They went again with the extra step. They gave us a better uh, tuner or it's basically an EQ to be able to customize the audio experience. It's just that we don't have stereo speakers. The last, next thing, obviously, as we're still talking about audio is we also don't have a headphone jack. Most mid-range devices in 2020, and of course, even some, I would say, gaming specific devices feature a headphone jack because of the low latency. Now, OnePlus answer is the fact that the, obviously, the OnePlus Buds, as well as the OnePlus uh, Bullet Z, feature low latency for Bluetooth. But again, that's yet to be tested. And I'm waiting on again on that update to come through. Uh, but the overall experience here essentially is that they did have to take that feature out. It gave us a big battery, a fast charging battery, but a headphone jack would have definitely been really, really nice. Uh, the next thing I definitely want to mention to you guys is a couple of things that are obviously pretty obvious. A, this device currently is not available in the US. So the European market, Asian market will definitely get to enjoy this. As I feel like right now, this would have definitely done a major amount of damage into the US market because of the price point. About $425 if we convert the 399 euros to US. This has no other competition yet. The Pixel 4a is not out yet, so we don't know basically if that's going to be competing exactly the same way. Um, it features 5G, it supports T-Mobile, Sub-600, Dual SIM. Um, a lot of the things that we love about OnePlus unlocked models, of course, would have done really good in the US, but currently not available. And I hope that that changes in the future. The other thing that also that comes with the fact that this is not available in our region is that the Google Pay is not available in the US. So if you try to activate it right now, you bring it into the US, and you like to use Google Pay, sadly, that's not going to work. It's going to say that this device is not, uh, this feature is not available in my region. So that's probably more of a, something they can fix in the future once it becomes available in the US. But in the current state, if you, even if you import it, you need to make sure that this is, you know, contactless payment is not something that you rely on all the time. So the last thing I want to talk about is obviously a lot of people have commented on this. Yeah, I've even seen some comments like that on my video last week is the fact that a lot of people said that this device is made out of plastic. And yes, you're right. It definitely has some plastic components. Now, the glass on the front and the glass on the back are Gorilla Glass 5. Uh, that's something that we can't change. That's definitely very nice. And it has the protection that Gorilla Glass 5 has. And it actually did come with a screen protector. I did remove mine because unfortunately, I actually dropped my phone uh, last night. And surprisingly, I definitely saw the fact that, you know, it, since this is running a plastic frame, I had something that was a little bit more damaged than a normal, basically, let's say if it was a metal frame that would have received. And that's right here on the bottom the corner edge of my device. And you can kind of see it right there where it actually rubbed off the plastic, uh, well, the coloring or the nice uh, reflective material that they're using to color the plastic to make it look like it's metal. So keep in mind, $335 at starting point. They did need to do some corner cutting, which I feel like at this point, it's something that you need to understand. I'm not saying it's a bad experience. I'm not saying this is going to change that the, uh, how the OnePlus uh, Nord works. I just need to be explain, explain that to you guys so that when you're considering getting something at this price point, these are the things that they've looked at to kind of cut corners. No stereo speakers, no headphone jack. Um, obviously, we didn't go 100, uh, you know, 120 hertz. We also didn't go to QHD. We have a 1080p, 90 hertz refresh rate, fast charging, 765G with X52 modem. Uh, those are the things that they needed to put in there. And of course, we didn't go with UFS 3.1. We went with UFS 2.1 for the internal storage. So a little bit of a difference. Not that it's super slow, but it's something to keep in mind. And of course, when we start looking at actual benchmarks, these are the numbers that we're getting. And keep in mind, this is the 7 series of devices. This is not running the 865. And I also did a run an internal storage uh, benchmark real quick with Android Bench, just so you guys can actually see that. And if you'd like to freeze this frame and check it out, be, please go ahead and do so. So when we think about the OnePlus Nord, we really need to look at it at the price point that it's being sold at. Don't look at it as this is not as good as the OnePlus 8 or not as good as the OnePlus 8 Pro or insert device with 865 chipset uh, processor in there. The OnePlus Nord is a very good recipe because there are certain things that they need to add and certain things that they need to take away to be able to get the price to drop the frame, the materials that they use, the experience, the operating system that they're able to provide. There's a lot of thought that was put into the OnePlus Nord and is this something that OnePlus needs to get into. 
What happened in 2020 is that the OnePlus 8 and the OnePlus 8 Pro both went away from the mid-ranger. So the OnePlus 8 starts at $799, or $699, which is roughly $700. Now that means we have nothing in the subcategory or what used to be the mid-ranger and that OnePlus used to thrive in. So that really makes sense why the OnePlus Nord exists. And some people have called this the successor to the OnePlus X. I feel like this is a different direction. Um, we may see some similarities with this device out to other devices, like, let's say maybe Oppo has put out in the past. That's true. Oppo and OnePlus share some things in there in the past, or we've seen things similar like that in the past. Example with the Find X2 Pro and the OnePlus 8 Pro. Both feature very similar panels, QHD resolution, 120 hertz. There's nothing wrong there. Use what you have and make it work to the best experience that you can. And of course, provide the best value to your user. And I've seen, I feel like that's where OnePlus is benefiting. So would I recommend this device to anybody? Absolutely. For the price point, there's no question. Keep in mind the Google Pay function that I mentioned to you guys that it currently doesn't work in the US. And just this is something that you want to be aware of. Uh, sub 600 5G support in the US works great on T-Mobile, 5G connectivity, all the things that you can expect for OnePlus at a very good price to feature set combination. So I hope you guys like this video. It's a little bit longer, but I felt like this kind of summarizes my experience of using the Nord for about a week. And of course, I want to be able to feed in the, this one, obviously, to my full review that will be coming up a little bit later on. And of course, to share with you guys more OnePlus Nord goodness. Like and subscribe and share this with all your friends. I'll see you guys in the next video.